So I recently bought a 2014 MacBook Pro on eBay. And after kind of looking into, um, I guess, what it was to own an older used um, laptop, I learned that they could potentially have some issues with dust within it. And so today we're going to go ahead and look at how to dust a MacBook Pro, um, at least for the model of 2014. And so um, I had to learn about this, and I've never done it before, and so you're going to do it right here with me for the first time. First thing I needed to buy was a uh, bit kit. I'm not even sure what we call this, but um, you need to have the right bits to get into an Apple product and most electronics, actually, a GameCube or whatever. And so we bought this uh, kit here, you can see below on Amazon, for a very reasonable price $14. And with it, I was then able to um, get into this MacBook Pro, as you'll see here. And so, as you can see, it comes with a ton of bits and even a guitar pick. Awesome super cool but no apparently these are things that you can use to open up certain electronics um, and so we're gonna go ahead and do this we're gonna flip the laptop over so we can take a look at the uh, screws that we're going to be taking off you can see there they're not your typical Phillips or a flathead this is something where you need a certain bit and so I did some research before I bought this and you need a 1.2 millimeter pentalobe bit and so as you can see here um, the product that I bought on Amazon does have that exact size within it uh, it's got the 1.2 and you can actually even see it on um, the uh, photo online and so that's the second to the bottom one there it is and it's the very last one on the left there 1.2 and so we're going to go ahead and take that out and put it onto our screwdriver so go ahead and take it out um, as you can see it's going to work uh, just like your typical um, miniature screwdriver except it's a little bit bigger if you've ever had one. It even has an extender. So this thing is really cool. So go ahead and put your bit in there and get to your uh, MacBook and you're gonna see here there are eight. Well actually, uh, well, what's the right number here? Is it eight? No, it's ten I think. Uh, four along the bottom, four along the top, and then two on the side. And so I made sort of this schematic with post-its because the order of the screws is very important. You don't want to mix them up and you want to keep them in the same position when you put them back. So as you can see here, I'm going to be placing the screws on the corresponding uh, post-it so that I, I put the original screw back in the original place of the screw here. So as you can see, I'm taking out the screw. I don't know if the screw is magnetic or the drill bit is, drill bit, or the screwdriver is, but it comes right out and sticks to it. And so I just put it right on that post-it because that is the location of it on my schematic. And so again, we're just going to keep doing this. And it's really, really easy. It's not, you're not using a lot of force. It comes right up and it sticks to at least uh, this screwdriver piece and so go ahead and get off everything and uh, I kind of did this in order of a a drummer <laughs> I, I play the drums and so I kind of was going all over the place if you know how about tuning the drums but anyway that's how I was doing it so just take them all off and put them on the corresponding post-it just like that see Okay, once you've got all the screws out and you haven't messed anything up and they're all on the right post-it, we're going to pry the back off now. Um, it's easier to start on the side of the fan, which is where the hinge is. Um, I notice, as you can see here, it's got way more give. I was able to grab it pretty easily. I was trying to be pretty uh, ginger with this thing and I did not want to start yanking and pulling. And so um, I did. The, it did come with this tool that I'm holding, this orange uh, sort of tool here. It was just like a sort of a pick slash uh, pry thing. But uh, eventually I just got my fingers in there and it popped right up. So no problem there. And it comes right off. And there's your first look at it. Um, here's the look of the backing. And you can see a little bit of dust here, but it's certainly not horrible. Here's a closer look at the actual uh, inside of the computer untouched. Um, mine was really, really in good condition. I, was, I got nervous because I was watching videos online where they were really dusty. Um, I'm, I'm pointing at this foam here because this foam piece is pretty easy to blow out when you start blowing it with air. Um, but again, if you look at this computer, mine was in fantastic shape. Incredible shape. I was not expecting it to be this clean in the slightest bit, but we're going to clean it anyway since we're here. It's important that you hold the fan down with some sort of tool, whether that be a screwdriver. Um, you don't want to spin the fan around with air when you're cleaning this thing. You could mess up the bearings, create static electricity apparently. These are some of the things I read about, but just be careful when you're doing that. 
Um, I was cleaning some alcohol with uh, those few metal pieces I just showed you. Um, just because they looked kind of dirty, you really shouldn't do that because I don't necessarily know what I'm doing and what electronic pieces should or should not be cleaned. But I did get away with it, so no big deal. I was using alcohol for um, the metal backing here, which came out really nice. Um, I think you can do that with uh, no fear. And as you can see here, that's probably where I got my most dust for sure. Now, I'm showing these two clips here. You see those two pieces of black metal? You, they're supposed to click, so listen for that. There you go. And so um, go ahead and get your screws and um, we're going to just put them back with it. That's a prank. I'm just kidding. Those are fake screws. Okay, so again, you're just putting the screws back where they were. So just follow your schematic and you'll be fine. Um, really not a big deal. And uh, these go in probably easier than they came out. Really, really easy. They just go right on in there. You don't over tighten it. Obviously, you don't want to strip anything or, um, you know, over screw it, is that a word? Um, just don't over tighten it. Just put it back in there, make it relatively snug, and um, you'll be fine. Okay, now is the moment of truth where we need to see if this laptop still actually works. Because um, in theory, I could have messed something up. So. As you can see, I didn't, so that's great. So it did turn on here. Um, I'm just checking to see if uh, everything works, and I actually got really confused because my keyboard was not lighting up. I started to freak out, severely freak out that I had messed something up because now my keyboard wasn't working. I was so upset um, and nervous, but I went to, into my settings, and under the keyboard, there's a uh, checkbox about the lighting conditions turning off automatically if you're under certain lighting conditions, so that's all that was going on. I was in too bright of light. So I was pretty happy that everything was okay. As you can see, everything works fine. Uh, boy, I was scared though, I'll tell you. So again, I'm just checking to see that the internet works here. Um, again, I didn't mess anything up, and it does. And so I appear to have done the job correctly, and um, everything's fine. So again, have the courage to do this. Clean out your laptop. Um, you'll be fine.